Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Birth Your Business interview series, where top experts in their field share how they turn their dream business into reality and make money doing what they love. I'm Beth Weinstein. I'm a coach who helps entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs launch and develop their conscious products and heart-centered businesses. I'm also a founder of running apparel brand, Only Adams, and come from a diverse background, helping launch and grow all types of businesses, from clothing to websites to food and more. And today I'm really excited for our guest because not only is she from a similar part of California that I'm from, uh, she's from Santa Cruz and I'm from the Bay Area, but uh, she's also developed her life's work around her passion for fitness and health and um, a fully integrated healthy way of living. And so today we're talking with Amber Zucksworth. She's an international Pilates and Vinyasa yoga instructor, professional contemporary dancer, a holistic nutritionist and founder of EpicSelf.com her online health and fitness coaching platform where she trains individuals and groups in optimal living for their unique body and lifestyle. Amber specializes in designing and producing deeply transformational mind, body, and spirit retreats and teacher training programs worldwide. As a contemporary dancer and a ballet dancer with over 25 years experience, Amber has turned to Pilates, yoga, and plant-based nutrition to stay injury-free and peak mind-body condition. Over the last 10 years, she's taught for some of the world's most revered, revered clubs, retreat centers and festivals, including Equinox, Sports Club LA, Yoga Works, and the Envision Festival. She's an adventurous entrepreneur, deeply passionate about positively shifting the world through full throttle conscious living. And right now she's coming to us from Costa Rica. Hi, Amber, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Beth. I'm excited Thanks. to be here. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Um, now, can you tell us more how you got onto this path of um, not only living in Costa Rica, but full throttle, full throttle conscious living? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I always say my journey really started with dance because I, I've been a dancer my whole life. My parents put me in ballet when I was three years old, and that really... Wow, I'm just so grateful I found something I'm super passionate about so young and that I had a family that really supported me in that passion. And I think that really, oh wow, just trained me in, in, the, in the understanding that I can really follow my passions and, and make a career of some sort really pursuing that and living from my heart. And so I'm super grateful for my parents for instilling that in me. But um, yeah, so I danced my whole life competitively until I was 18 years old and went to college for dance performance and choreography in San Francisco. Um, graduated in that degree. But along that journey, I had, wow, a lot of acute and chronic injuries, as you can imagine. And so I had to really learn how to remedy those injuries from a young age. Um, at age 13, I had really bad low back pain, and I found out I had stress fractures in my lumbar spine, L4, L5. That was basically going to derail my dance career um, permanently, unless I did something about it. And so I was seeing chiropractors and acupuncturists and physical therapists, and nobody was really able to give me tools and techniques, um, uh, movement techniques, um, whether it was Pilates or yoga or a myofascial release, the things I teach now, nobody was teaching me those things back then. I was really frustrated. So I suffered in back pain from age 13 to 20 until I found Pilates. And in Pilates, um, well, I found Pilates in college and it was part of our maintenance programs. So before we'd go into rehearsals five, six hours a day, we'd have a Pilates mat class every morning. And after two weeks of practicing Pilates mat, my back pain totally vanished. And I was like, hold on, what is going on here? I need to know this method like inside and out for my own body, for my own longevity, but also because I want to share it. It's transformed my life so much that I really feel like no one has to suffer the way that I did for so long, especially dancers, professional athletes, of course, everyday person as well. But those that are really pushing their bodies, there's no need for them to be suffering so much. And so um, I went on to get my Pilates certification, full comprehensive and all the equipment as well as Matt. And then went through yoga certification, fell in love with yoga very, uh, pretty much around the same time. And then I went through um, plant-based nutrition school as well because I found nutrition early on in my team when I was trying to be a better dancer. So my goal was always, how can I be a better dancer, mind, body, and spirit? And that meant I need to take care of what, you know, my body and what I was putting into my body. And so I got into nutrition pretty early on and ended up minoring in holistic health and nutrition in college and then went on to nutrition school. So what happened is after college, I, I initially thought, okay, maybe I'll just open up a dance studio and just pursue dance only. And so I danced professionally for eight years in San Francisco. I didn't open up a studio. As you know, the Bay Area is super expensive and I didn't have the funds at the time to do that. But what I could do was start teaching Pilates and yoga nutrition outside of my dance career. So I had my dance rehearsals and performances, but 
then I was able to schedule my clients around that schedule as well. Um, and so I loved, I felt like I was really living on purpose. I had all these passions that changed my life so much that I was now sharing with others and helping him positively impact their lives. Um, so then after eight years of living in San Francisco and just realizing this lifestyle is no longer for me, living in the heart of the city, just feeling like a rat in a wheel with no real way to leverage my time. I was already teaching seven, eight hours a day, six days a week. There was no way for me to add more clients or charge more per hour. And it was just, I was at my breaking point too. I had no balance in my life. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, my social circle was very small. I didn't have time for a relationship. I was just working nonstop. And so I had the opportunity. I moved down to Costa Rica four years ago um, after teaching at the Indian Festival, which is our annual yoga music festival down here. I was invited to teach four years ago here, and I fell so madly in love with this country. And I said, you know what, this, this is a, a massive need in my life to have more connection to nature, more community, just more balance. And Costa Rica really offered that to me. So I moved down and I opened up a studio here here. And um, since then, I've been producing retreats and teacher training programs. I actually closed the, the space, the studio space, because I wanted a more location independent lifestyle. So now I'm free to produce and coach all over the world um, and also online without being tied to a specific location. But um, I definitely chose Manuel Antonio, where I live right now, because it's such a beautiful haven. It's just, it, to me, it's my, my heaven. Um, and I know everyone's super different, but for me, it was very much... Um, and intuitive knowing that this is where I should stay and be like home-based. So, mm. Oh, that's mm. such a beautiful journey. I can, I can relate to definitely the injuries, but obviously not even close to being professional, but I know what you mean, like trying everything and then you discover like, wow, one thing works and it's not what the Western doctors have been telling us. So when you're at that breaking point of, um, you know, not finding the balance, working all the time, not even going on dates, you know, cause a lot of entrepreneurs have been there. What yeah. do you think, what woke you up? I mean, was there something just terrible that happened or were you just like, <laughs> you know, for me, it was travel. I mean, I was already traveling so much. I, I had my base was in San Francisco and I was teaching in Mexico every month at Rancho La Puerta, which is a destination spa. And I was traveling a lot and producing retreats already because I, I started Epic Self 10 years ago as a blog, actually. Uh, but then when Skype came online, I started actually coaching clients through my website and um, it developed into more online business that way. But then I started producing retreats and training programs out in other parts of the world, away from San Francisco. Um, but my point with that was that um, the, the turning point for me, though I've traveled so much, Costa Rica was very much this like awakening of, oh my gosh, there's a way that I can live outside of the US that I feel is like home. Like I felt my well into anywhere I live is more home than where I grew up. And because I have such a strong intuitive knowing that this has really just felt like home to me, a soul home for me, that um, I, I needed to listen to that. My intuition was so strong. And then also the universe just kind of aligned to make it happen. So once I started the ball rolling, man, things happened so quickly. I was down here four or five months. I landed four months later and I opened my studio up five months later mm -hmm. after my initial trip. Mm -hmm. So it, it happened so fast. And so that was a, a really strong green light for me. Like if things are working and flowing this easily, then this is meant to happen. And I also, I really saw when I came to Envision, I saw how many amazing people were already down here living their dreams, literally building their dream permaculture conscious communities, you know, building these phenomenal festivals and doing these retreats. And I, I saw their lifestyle and I said, I saw their glow. I saw the ease and the, and the, the joy that they radiate. And I was like, I want a piece of that. Whatever that is, whatever that Pura Vida magic is, like I want, I want some of that in my life. More full, more full time. <laughs> That is, that's gorgeous. And I, I really want to reiterate a key point um, that I want to point out to listeners is that when you started putting the intention in and just yeah. followed the intuition that everything really did just start happening. And now, it sounds like almost like on accident, right? It's like, Hey, it was with ease. It flowed. It's, you know, like you followed yeah. your heart and next thing you know, um, like if you had told, if you told me like five years ago that I would be here, I would not have believed you. I would have said, no way, no how. Even though I was already living a, a pretty like travel-based location, independent lifestyle, though my base was in San Francisco. If you had told me that, I would have been like, no way. I didn't even know that Costa Rica was not even on my radar. I had wow. been here 10, 12 years prior and totally hated it. I remember being here like all these bugs and the tropics, the sweat, the heat. I, was, I hate this place. That was my initial reaction to it when I was younger. So coming back was really eye-opening. I was ready for it, you know. Yeah, and you know what? Another key to that is that you stepped out of your comfort zone, which seems to be obviously, I say that, but it's a common theme that 
when someone, Absolutely. you know, change up your environment, try something new, try something that scares you, you know, the bugs, the, the sweat, the heat, and um, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so in your practice, especially um, because you don't just do yoga Pilates, but you do a fully integrated um, nutrition, plant-based nutrition, you do retreats, you do teacher training. In your experience, what do you find is a, a common um, challenge that a lot of people face when they're making this transition? Let's say like new yoga teachers or, um, you know, other people you coach who want to be, um, you know, leaders within their community or whatever it is that you're training people to do. What are some challenges that you see that they go through? I'd say the biggest challenge that all of our teacher trainees experience and all clients, because we do a lot of work with conscious entrepreneurs, is that they don't believe in themselves. And I was one of these people. I didn't believe it. I only believed in myself to about this amount, right? And I, I, so I hit a ceiling of, okay, what is it going to take to get me here? Well, it's that quantum leap, right? It's that willingness to just lose that identity, that paradigm, whatever it was that you were in in order to step into something new. And that's scary, but that's, it's always worth it. It's always worth it to make that jump. Um, so yes, I've done many of those jumps in my life and I was terrified to, I was all excited, also terrified to leave San Francisco and jump into that new lifestyle. Um, but I think the, it's the willingness to put yourself out there. It's the willingness to believe in yourself constantly. And I find meditation and mantra are very powerful tools with that because you could have a thousand degrees. You could go to so many online programs and read and go to a lot of webinars and just learn every, all the tips and tricks on how to build a sales funnel, how to do marketing, all that. If you don't believe in yourself, none of it's going to be effective because you're not going to do it. Right. And so it's, it's the, it's the belief. And so I always work on thoughts first. That's the number one emphasis for me is how do we not only change the food that's going in, change the, um, the movement patterns that are happening in your life, but also the thoughts are really, really key. Oh yeah. That's huge. Especially you hit some key points there. You know, you can create a sales funnel, you have degrees, but if you're not in the right mindset and the right thinking, then what good is it? Um, so that's amazing. That, that really is helpful because I'm, um, it's a common theme, theme that all everyone I'm interviewing is saying that almost every entrepreneur I know says, and um, it is a common problem people struggle with, but then they don't actually think about it. You know, they think like, oh, if I just work harder, then I'm going to get the results I want. But it's actually like, it's deeper than that. Um, it's so much deeper than that because it's a scarcity mindset versus an abundancy mindset. And this is something I, you were wanting to kind of chat about a little bit too, is that the, the work-life balance that's required because if you're living in a scarcity mindset of like I have to just work more in order to make this stuff happen and I can't have play and joy and love in my life then it's not going to come easy it's going to be challenging if you think it's going to be challenging and you and you're working and you're driving really really hard believe me I did that for the last 10 years <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's not worth it it's not worth it because you don't enjoy this journey right yeah. you're not enjoying the process and you're also not building a lifestyle necessarily that is conducive to your health and your happiness which I think is the end all goal in life, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, if you're not building a business that's going to serve your happiness and your fulfillment in life and your purpose in life, well then what's the point anyway? Exactly. The journey is the point, the enjoyment of the journey. And, and you, like you said, you can literally, I mean, I've seen this happen to many people get sick, you know, run their bodies into the ground. Um, right. they come down right. with, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal, adrenal yes. fatigue, everything. And it's like, you know what? There's a balance. Balance is key. Um, so how do you help teach people things like balance and um, mindset? Like you mentioned meditation and mantra. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. are those, those are key. Um, any other techniques? Um, you know, it's just building discipline and willpower. And those are the two hardest things, you know, building ritual and habit into your life. And how do we do that? Through consistency and through baby small steps. So my action plans with clients is very much, okay, every day we're going to have a green smoothie and a salad. Let's just do that. Let's just repeat that over and over again for a week, two weeks, three weeks until that's nailed. And then we can add more. But to go all in oftentimes is way too overwhelming for people to radically shift. And less of that type of person, and they love to just jump into a whole new lifestyle and just go hard at it. Some people like that. I'm one of those people. But the vast majority are not, especially if they're living in an environment that isn't conducive to the change they're trying to draw in. Um, and so, yeah, like small baby steps. And, and that's, and then it's the the perseverance, it's the willpower to show up for yourself every day, to sit with yourself in meditation every day. I would say that's the hardest thing for most people. Besides changing their diet, the hardest thing is to sit with their mind. But hey, the mind rules your life. So either you wrote you rule the mind or the mind rules you. And so just sitting 10 minutes a day in meditation can be so transformative for people because it makes them aware of themselves in all moments of their lives. 
It's amazing. The most simple thing that, yeah. I mean, if, if we all do, and so many people are resistant to it. But I love, um, I also do want to point out what you said, you know, start with just the green smoothie and the green salad, which are baby steps. I mean, it's right. a complete metaphor for anything we take on in life, including starting a business, changing your diet, um, transforming your mind. Right. And like you actually just said, um, you probably do this too. I tell people, if you want to start meditating, just start with like two minutes, work up to right. five minutes, you know, right. unless you're like me and you, I, I tend to be like, go all in. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Once I saw it work for me, I was like, I am not going without this. It was <laughs> like, no wonder everybody's been telling me this for, you know, my whole life. Um, so then tell me more about these retreats that you do down there. And now because you're not doing, um, you said you kind of switched gears a little, so you're less location based, you closed your studio and now you just do more retreats. Yeah. So, so yeah, we basically do uh, one retreat a month down here. It's our, what we call the Epic Awakening. It's a five day retreat that includes Pilates and yoga every day, also myofascial release. So we use tennis balls to work into the fascial networks, which really helps unlock a lot of the energy channels that we're unaware we're holding <laughs> the fascia networks and the energy channels, um, but it's all self-massage, so really nice. Um, we also go on day adventures to the, to the Nayaka waterfalls, which is one of the most beautiful waterfalls in Costa Rica, in my opinion. Um, Manuel Antonio National Park as well, which is the number one most famous park here too. Um, and then we have two uh, sacred plant medicine ceremonies. So we actually work with ayahuasca. We work with shaman in the local region. And we take our, our all of our retreats are focused on plant medicine. It's helping gear the, the client um, towards that experience. So the diet is also organic and vegan and very strict dietary protocol dedicated to the ayahuasca experience. Um, so that's our five-day retreat. We have a one-day integration at the end of that as well after those ceremonies. Um, and then the, the yoga teacher training programs are my new... Um, Wow, exciting program that we launched this year. We're doing four a year right now. And um, there are 30-day programs that are uh, vinyasa yoga teacher training program. They're eating 100% uh, organic vegan cuisine, vegan and raw. Um, we have two shamanic ayahuasca ceremonies as well as Team of Scott Sweat Lodge. And then they also learn how to build their website. So I teach them how to build their website. So we do sales, marketing, branding, all of that. Um, so it's really preparing people for the business aspect beyond just teaching, which is an incredible skill set to learn in and of itself. But it's how do we make it a business, how to make it sustainable and abundant. And, um, and so we can make the most impact in the world. That's really my mission in this life is to help the light leaders, empower them to really shine their brightest so that they can actually make the biggest positive impact. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love it. That's, that's also why I'm here. It's like, I know I have this gift. I'm here to help. Um, yeah. I'm really curious. How do you integrate in, um, you know, the, the plant medicine into, um, let's say, training teachers to run a successful business? Like, how do you, how do you use, and a lot of our listeners probably don't even know what it is, but I don't even know if it's worth sure. explaining it, but maybe a quick overview um, of how you see them integrating. Yeah, that's a great question. So with working with, um, with ayahuasca, what we're really helping people tap into is their spirit, is their soul's purpose. So out of the mind, right, out of the chatter of the mental mind, we can really tap into our intuition, into our soul. And ayahuasca is a sacred plant medicine. It opens the door to the spirit realm, allows us to commune with spirits and actually really connect to our own soul. And so what people gain with us is an immense clarity about their purpose, about their path, about really what matters in life. Um, most people, People realize love, connection, um, creativity, and their purpose are the most important things in life, you know, once they go through ceremonies with us. And it really is just um, a way to soften the ego and open the heart, expand the mind, and again, really just be on purpose. Remember your purpose. Mm -hmm. so it's a remembering process. I think that's something that people don't necessarily um, understand when they read about ayahuasca, but it's very much um, a remembering of what your soul already intuitively knows. But the mind is so full of paradigms, identities, um, and labels that, um, you know, we're trying to fit ourselves into boxes and we're also holding on to these layers that are not really us. So this peels back the layers, allows your soul to really shine forward. Oh, it sounds beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, that's great. I mean, I, you know, I can get into a long conversation of how I believe it's, it's important to integrate all of this into, um, you know, business, life, health, body, energy. Um, so because we don't have that much more time, I'm curious, what are some big tips from your journey, like three or four tips that you would give, let's say that person that's looking to, or is starting to sense like, hey, I have this desire within in my heart and I'm starting to tap into it, but I just 
don't know how to go about, you know, following my heart or following my dreams. Like, what have you learned that you would tell them? Like the top most important things are. Most important thing is to, well, I would say that there's like, there's so many, but I would say, um, first of all, be willing to offend your mind. Our logical mind is so good at telling us stories as to why we shouldn't do something based on, oh, well, you know, there's money involved and there's this and risk and that. If the mind wasn't there, what would you be doing? What would you be doing if the mind was not there to tell you otherwise? So be willing to, um, to offend your mind in order to follow your heart and also be willing to sit with your heart and your intuition, which requires you to sit in stillness, which is why meditation is so powerful. Um, the other thing is to just do more of what you love. So if let's say you love to dance. For me, it was like, okay, I love to dance. My ideal day would be to dance six hours a day. So I pursued that because I knew that that would be so fulfilling to me, um, at least for that part of my life, that, that journey of my life. Um, the other thing is to um, really face your shadows. So face the dark parts of you, the things that you're not willing to accept. Ask yourself, what are the things that I'm not accepting about myself? Because the reality is you can only grow so much business-wise. Um, in relation to your personal growth. So if you are, like for me, for example, a lot of my imbalances led to an eating disorder in my early 20s, and I was extremely bulimic for five years. And the only way that I was able to transition out of that was through meditation and mindfulness and all those other tools and tips I, I talked about. But in that despair of self-destruction, in that cage I was in my mind with the eating disorder, there was no ability for me to actually grow in my business, even though it looked good on the outside and I had a lot of clients and blah, blah, blah. I was self-destructive on the inside and I didn't believe in myself enough to get to the next level. And so I had to do the personal work, clear out those things and be willing to face those things because maybe they don't transmute right away. Maybe it's just going to take you a while to process that stuff, but you have to be willing to look at it. And I think that's something in the spiritual world specifically, people like to bypass like, Oh no, just stay in the light. Just use that, use mantra, just stay happy all the time. The reality is that the spiritual path is not, it is, it is looking at those things and being willing to feel them, being willing to transmute them into into a higher vibration, but you can't transmit them if you're, willing, if you're only stuffing them down and not looking at them. So I would say if you're looking for your business to grow rapidly, do the self work first, <laughs> focus on you first and focus on those things you don't accept about yourself. That's good advice. Cause that's what I've been doing for the last like three years straight. And it, <laughs> it's like literally Me too. deeper and deeper and deeper. I'm like, ah, but it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, I agree with you completely. And a lot of this stemmed, you know, in my journey, it kind of stemmed, um, you know, I was already on the spiritual path, then I launched a business, then I brought up more shit, then I had to right. look at it. And it's like, just keeps going. Now it's like, oh, wait, right. you know, but um, I right. want to reiterate, reiterate for the viewers, huge things that you said, um, you know, keep following your passion. It's a big thing, you know, just stick with it, follow the excitement, do what you love. Um, look into stillness, you know, if you can't sit with your mind, what can you sit with? You're not, you're probably not gonna be able to sit with, um, I don't know, doing financial analysis about your business um, or whatever it is. Uh, um, what else? Uh, looking at yourself, looking at the shadows, being, being able to sit with maybe the negative parts of yourself that you're not feeling good about because it is really important for growth and also to be in service to what, you know, with whatever you're doing. Um, that's how we serve is to know ourselves and then get out there and then we can be bigger and better for the rest of the world. So this is really good. Yeah, so now, huh? And I just want to add one last yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, um, so one, one big lesson I've been learning the last couple of years is just trust. Trust in the divine timing, trust in the, in the path that you're on because you have no idea how it's going to unfold. And there's all, all sorts of surprises coming your way. But if you block it by having a tunnel vision on this is my vision like for me this is my vision of my retreat center it's going to be like this if i had those blinders on i would have thrown myself into the ground but instead i had to keep my eyes open and go whoa, whoa, whoa let's adapt and shift because this is not smart anymore though it does it's not in alignment with your vision um that's a trap that a lot of entrepreneurs fall into is they're not willing to fail in mm -hmm. a sense in one way um and so then they're not able to succeed in another way that could be exactly what they're meant to be doing, but they end up going down um, a tunnel vision path. And so you have to be adaptable and you have to be willing to trust that whatever's happening is what's best for you, whether it's like really hard in the moment because you're learning a lot of lessons. Like I've been through so much failure in mm -hmm. my life, but it's made me so much stronger mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful for it. And so be willing to fail, be willing to go through the hard stuff because that's how you get better and that's how you adapt faster.
Oh yeah. And then that way you're able to serve your clients better because then you've already been through it. You've learned through it. You know, you know, to stay adaptable. Um, I, I agree with you completely on that. You know, a big part of it is, um, the journey, you know, and the journey, we don't know anything besides what's happening in the very present moment. So right. why not be open to the magic of life and how it unfolds? It's, I mean, it's the beauty. If we knew everything that was going to happen, there'd be no reason to live. It'd be boring as hell. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so can you tell people where to find you and your retreats? And then, um, then we can also tell them about your free gift. Sure. So epicself.com com is my home base online, but you guys can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. Those are my two favorites uh, in terms of social media. My free gift for you guys today is the Detox Your Life e-course. This is a three-hour audio course that covers really, wow, all these ways you can detoxify your life, whether it's nutrition, whether it's um, clearing out your, sh your um, medicine cabinet and your shampoo and all the, all the chemicals that are wreaking havoc on your hormonal system. Uh, I talk about internal self-dialogue, how to really rewrite the negative thoughts that are looping your mind, the stories that we tell ourselves. Also our social circles, how to let go of friends and family who are just really just these energy vampires sucking you dry of all of your joy and love and happiness. Um, so it really encompasses, it's very holistic. And also, I also talk about movement of course as well. So many, many things there, but it's really packed. I, I put in so much information, it gets really specific down to like what mattresses are better for you to sleep on. So it gets amazing. I, and I love the energy vampires. I use that term all the time because there's just so many and they're not worth having around. I mean, they're really not, <laughs> right. it, you know, it's a, it's a blessing when they, when you rid them out of your life, or they disappear out of your life. So everybody definitely download that e-course. It is, the link is in the email and, um, it's epicself.com slash detox your life. And, um, Amber, thank you so much for being with us today. I, I absolutely love your work so much, and I can't wait to get down to Costa Rica on one of your retreats. Hopefully this year, we'll see. Um, oh, I love and, that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, everyone, please be sure to listen in tomorrow for another expert who's going to share their tips and their secrets for how they follow their dreams and make money doing what they love. Thank you. Yay.